Hello YouTube, Robinhood Bricks here, and it's Brick Hall O'Clock with two exciting packages from Bricklink.com. Okay, so let's get into these. I've got two because they're a little bit smaller than usual, so I thought rather than have a very short video, I'll get through two smaller packages. Uh, uh. And this, yep, that's everything, is a very special order that I've been looking forward to for quite a long time because there's a couple of things that I really, really wanted for, well, ages, basically, but never got around to getting just because I was going to be, because uh, I was trying to be kind of a bit tight uh, and I wasn't willing to spend the, for me, uh, high amount to get these two minifigures. And they are the two remaining minifigures. I can see them straight away from the Ultra Agents line, from uh, the baddies. So um, they're the two I need to complete the full collection of those. I don't know why it's just this particular line uh, of, well, it's even half a line, really, given that I'm just collecting the villains. I don't know why it's this one that I've chosen to pick. I just really like the minifigures, I guess. Uh, so this one is called Sharks, with an X, to make it super cool. And he's got this lovely gold tooth helmet just like uh, break jaw out of the normal agents line and I just love his face with those sort of pointed teeth in metal and purple eyes and he's kind of got gills because he's uh, as the name suggests sharks sort of part shark or something like that uh, and he's uh, I think he's able to swim underwater or something like that so um, this vendor only had the minifigure itself not the kit that he needs to be complete but fortunately I've pieced that together from bits on previous hauls there's kind of an axe there with uh, one of these flag pieces at an angle and so on and that would then clip on his back and make him complete and that's his kind of shark fin I suppose it looks a bit bulky really but maybe he uh, swims underwater with that sticking out uh, <laughs> The surface I don't really know but um yeah it seems that uh, he was quite rare uh, I don't know if some of these sets uh, in Ultra Agents were only released in North America but if you look on uh, eBay at the set that Sharks came in which was uh, 70172 Antimatter's Portal Hideout you'll see that they're all for sale in the United States so that's why this minifigure is very rare uh, in Europe and uh, especially in the UK but uh, I managed to get this whole order from a French seller so I don't usually buy uh, Bricklink orders from France just because of the additional uh, postage cost and so on but for this guy and even more importantly this guy I think it was worth it. So this is probably the most expensive one. I've already got Antimatter the leader who's probably my favourite of all of them of all time but this one's probably at least a close second and his name is Electrolyzer and he's got electric bolts sort of attached to his helmet it's a unique piece there dual molded looks fantastic and then his eyes are sort of all electric -y as well and his mouth and he's kind of in this lovely electric suit with all this piping going around it and you can see he's got some sort of batteries or cells on the uh, belt there another sign on the back with a little fan now I think his head is supposed to be glow in the dark let's just test that very briefly on my lights eh, hard to tell I'll have to charge that better my my uh, filming lights aren't the best for charging up uh, glow in the dark pieces but it, it looks like it because it's kind of that off white um, but yeah I mean he's fantastic so he also came with some kit that I've managed to piece together and it's all this stuff so that goes around his neck uh, and it's connected to one of these bendy pipe pieces uh, and then there's kind of an electric bolt on each side and that's the what looks like a pretty horrid weapon to uh, go around shocking people it's like he's got twin cattle prods or something isn't it uh, so I'll just get him re-pieced together and he holds on to these oh wonder if that's quite long enough let's see 
Oh, so it's sort of like that. And he can go around jabbing people with electric bolts. Not a very nice thing to do, but that's his vibe. So there we go. So now I just really need to decide whether uh, electrolyzer and sharks are going to join my boardroom table full of uh, Ultra Agents uh, villains uh, in my town hall uh, or be out on the prowl, on the loose, up to no good. So I don't really know what to do with them yet. So if you've got any ideas for these two, do let me know. Uh, there's already one that I've got that isn't at the boardroom table, which is uh, Terabyte. He's the sort of computer specialist one. He also looks really cool. I thought I'd have him um, doing something computery somewhere else. Uh, so all the rest are in the boardroom table. Uh, and I think there's room to extend it. Though that room is very, very full indeed. So uh, check out my town hall video, which will probably be in the first 10 uh, if you're interested in seeing that but these are great figures and i'm very happy to have them as part of my collection so i think they were a, a sort of minor indulgence in that i think they're about sort of 10 pounds and six pounds each which i know for some people isn't a lot and for some people is uh, a very lot <laughs> so for me that's a relative extravagance i must say so, as always, while I was there, uh, I decided to buy everything else that I liked the look of that was a reasonable price. And the third minifigure I got was this one. He's from all the uh, Volcano Explorer sets. And he's the Explorer that's in the sort of foil-coloured, reflective, heat-protective jacket and helmet and all the rest of it. And he's got the lovely logo of the Volcano on the front there. And all these great straps with hazard lines on and he's got his what would that be oxygen gauge or a temperature gauge probably oxygen i suppose and he's sweating despite wearing this protective suit but i mean this suit's come uh it came in the uh series minifigure for the radioactive uh, guy and it also came as a scientist in white but this is the only one in this sort of silvery color and i thought yeah yeah I'll probably use him in a scientific uh, context. Uh, and he's got kind of like what looks like a fan cooling him down on the back. But yeah, I really like that minifigure. I didn't buy any of the Volcano Explorer sets because uh, I just thought I can't really have a volcano <laughs> in the middle of my city. Although some cities around the world do have exactly that. Um, so anyway, I like him there. Oh, he's got some lovely letters on his head as well. S260C, so that's obviously his designation. Uh, and then this vendor had lots and lots of really cool minifigure accessory pieces. So I've got an absolute boatload of these uh, disposable coffee cup type things. Uh, I think I've got 16 of those in there, hopefully, rolling around. They'll all be trying to escape for the rest of this haul. Uh, and then I've got some tiles. So we've got the rainbow tile from the... Uh, what was it? Series 19, was it? Bear costume guy? Uh, so I really hate that minifigure, I must say. I really don't like it. The colours just really ugh, don't get me at all. Uh, but I've got, obviously, the rainbow that comes with him. Uh, and I thought another one might make it a bigger rainbow for a sign or something like that anyway. So I just got one of those. It's pretty cheap. Uh, Edna Mode bag with mode on. So I'm going to be using these for a sort of very high-end boutique for ladies to get their shopping from in Brick Nottingham. Uh, so that was from the Disney Series 2 minifigure. Another kind of random one is this strip of photos. I thought if I did have a photo booth, even though these are of the Apache Chief uh, from the Lego Batman movie uh, second series of minifigures, uh, it wouldn't really matter. It still looks like a sort of strip of photos. If I were to do a photo booth or photo processing place, not that you need those so much anymore. Then we've got three more of these Zebra 2x2 tiles, which are from the uh, Joker's Notorious Lowrider, set 70906. And I still haven't decided exactly what I'm going to use these for, but it's clearly going to be some pretty gaudy interior somewhere, I think. Maybe vertically, maybe not. And they're quite clever that you can sort of turn them either way around and they still match. So I quite like that. Well two ways anyway there we go so that's them 
Then from the recent DC uh, minifigure series, I've got the newspaper that comes with uh, Superman. So obviously it's the Daily Planet. Caped Wonder Stun City. So that's quite fun. It's just another different newspaper for uh, me to put on a newspaper rack. And we've got a big four-engine jet there with engine trouble being helped by Superman. So it's a really good print. So I really like that one. And I don't really want any of the... Uh, minifigures that come with a lot of these accessories because they've got non-yellow skin colour. And although these two, you might say, don't have yellow skin either, that's not because uh, it's a skin tone. It's because this one's horribly, horribly mutated. <laughs> and this one, I don't know. Goodness knows what's happened to him, but it's not pleasant, is it? <laughs> uh, and have we done all these? No, we've got some more electric bolts. So energy pieces in trans yellow, four of those. Uh, and there, so I can make a jellyfish with them. So I can get a top like this out of a dish. This didn't come with a hole. Uh, flower piece or something like that. And that can connect onto one of those four grabber holders, which I ended up stealing to use for my um, Venus fly drop ride. But I've got another one on order. Uh, and we'll have four of these sort of hanging down from the top of the brick built jellyfish as tentacles. So I'll try and show you what that'll look like. Just grab a fistful of these. Yeah, kind of like that. So I think that'll look really good. Uh, and those ones were from the uh, DC figure as well, but it was um, Bumblebee who, uh, well, was the one dressed up looking like a Bumblebee, unsurprisingly. I was going to describe her, but self-evident really. And talking of Bumblebee, there is Bumblebee's hair which is unique to that minifigure. It's sort of got these two sort of pom-pom bunches uh, in black. So that's really nice. I can give that to somebody in Brick Nottingham. And then something I've wanted for ages is several of these crow pieces. Now, what I really want is a, another load of uh, seagulls. When they were available, I got about 10 or 12. So I've got about uh, 10 or 12 uh, seagulls all around my sort of uh, sea areas in Brick Nottingham. But I want more. And I also want more of the little white birds, but you can't get them on bricks and pieces yet. Though, interestingly, you can get the blue small bird uh, that comes with the uh, bookstore uh, recent modular, uh, though it is quite expensive on bricks and pieces, which is now open again in the UK. Yay! I've done two orders already, so uh, tiles are en route. Uh, but another bird that's available uh, in proper Lego is this black crow and it's kind of on a little pin piece you might be able to see there on the bottom so it generally fits uh, into very few pieces but you can still work it out um, some of the hair pieces what it traditionally sits in because it comes with um, all sorts of minifigures actually most of them are Tonto from the Lone Ranger's uh, range because he has a dead crow on his head <clears throat> but another is uh, the Series 11 Scarecrow, and um, I've got that one, but it's kind of a good place to keep a crow on the Scarecrow. But I thought I could have these on the top of buildings, uh, top of tall trees, making their beautiful bird song that crows make, sort of noise like, ah! <laughs> so what a beautiful sound that will grace uh, Brick Nottingham. So I've got quite a few of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that is Excellent. Uh, and I'm sure when I've spread them out around Brick Nottingham, they'll barely be noticeable because six just won't be enough. But um, that's all he had. They're quite a reasonable price. Uh, and I think they're quite, uh, you know, obviously a crow. So, yeah, very happy to have those. Uh, and then we've got some heads. So I better make a little totem out of them to help us have a look at them. Now, these are generally from series minifigures. So, starting at the bottom, this is a head from the, uh, uh, the which one was it? The Lego movie? Uh, it's the second series, though, the watermelon guy, these sunglasses ones. It's got two sides. And it's a really nice head, actually, and it's kind of lost on the watermelon guy because the watermelon kind of covers virtually all of his face. You can kind of just see it, and obviously you can only see one side at once, but for a sort of cool dude... Uh, sunglasses piece. I think that's a really good head. Then above that, we've got the uh, 
goateed face of the Series 15 Fawn. And yeah, I kind of like that with a goatee, only one sided. But um, that's another one you don't sort of really appreciate because it's always in just that single context. But I think that'll make a really good face elsewhere. Then this one with the really big eyebrows is the Circus Strongman from Series 17. Now, again, that's another face you don't really see much of because it's usually hidden by an absolutely huge moustache. All you see is those big eyebrows. But that's a really nice face as well. So glad to have that. And then also from Series 17 is the Retro Spaceman. And that's just a great sort of wacky face, isn't it, with his gritted teeth. You can almost uh, hear him singing his own theme tune as he runs around <laughs> uh, with some nice angled uh eyebrows so he's really good as well and then out of the recent but not last one but uh the penultimate series uh is the 19 series 19 shower guy and this is just a fantastic head not only is that arguably the best happy smile that's ever been made by lego but the embarrassed face on the other side is just fantastic so i'm using my uh shower guy uh, underneath the beach shower on uh, Brick Nottingham Beach. So having another one of those heads, uh, probably with the embarrassed side showing, I guess, um, is a must for me. So that is a very good order, I think. That was about uh, £34, which sounds like an absolute load, but it was mainly these minifigures. I think that was like 5, 6 and 10 or something like that. So when you've taken all that out, these pieces averaged at about 30 to 40p. Uh, which, given the crow's rarity and some of the other pieces' rarity, I think was an all right deal. Anyway, it was a bit of an extravagance as far as uh, my usual frugality is concerned, but I just had to get these two guys. So I've done that. I've got that full set of minifigures. Woo! Right, so let's move on to the second package. Try not to knock the camera. Ooh. And this is a very small order. You see why I did two at once now. So get rid of that. Uh, and this was a very interesting seller um, because it's he's clearly a person that goes a lot to the build a minifigure wall uh, in uh, Lego stores uh, because he had loads and loads of pieces that have never come in a set or never come on a series minifigure. And like a lot of people, I kind of like to collect all the different varieties and different colours of certain pieces. Not, you know, to any ridiculous degree, but I do like to get them because uh, variety is the spice of life after all. So when I found this vendor, I wanted it for these things and then got what I could on top of that. But with this vendor, I just found it really intriguing to try and find as many pieces that technically don't exist in any set uh, as possible. Uh, and he had quite a variety. So each of these, well, almost each of these, is pretty special. This one isn't special. This is a Nexo Knight's Lance head, which is probably really quite common. So I just put that on my totem. And the last head while we're here is unique to the building minifigure wall. And it's kind of a clown or mime face. And it's very similar to a few that have come in clown sets like the recent hidden side word and things like that or even the official mime but it is actually different so yeah i bought that out of pure curiosity i'm gonna do the non-exciting ones first ski pole i had a spare one one more to make a set i got oh, i thought two of these oh yeah there we are two gold sort of trophies they're quite good. I might even use those for building ornaments. Don't know. And then the, oh, no, another boring piece. A one by 2 medium Nougat brick. <laughs> That's for a mod I'm going to do to my uh, brick store. Uh, and then the interesting ones. So, a boombox with cassette deck on the front. Well, that comes with absolutely loads of sets, you'll say like the recent Series 20 Breakdancer, the Series 3 Rapper, Vacation Robin, Party Banana, all sorts of things, the fitness instructor, but never black with a silver trim. You go and look at them, you'll see that that is actually unique. That might be a very small distinction for some of you, but it was enough to make me put it in the cart. 
Um, then I've got this. This is a really interesting one. So it's dual molded cycle hat helmet in white with dark orange hair coming out the back. So it's the same mold uh, that came with the uh, recent, um, what was it? Mountain biker. Uh, but that one was lime with dark brown hair uh, in series 19. And this one obviously is a completely different combo and that doesn't come in any set, but is great to have for another female or long haired cyclist. Then, oh, this one. Wow, I just love this one. So this is cut off jeans. You can see the sort of frilly end at the bottom and uh, normal sort of jeans pattern there. And this doesn't come in any set either, but I just love these. Some people call them Daisy Dukes because uh, Daisy Duke from Dukes of Hazard always used to wear cut off jeans and look very good in them as well. Uh, so good that I bought two of those. So I might be swapping those out with some people on my beach so they can have cut off jeans. Uh, and that'll be fantastic. So I absolutely love those. Oh no, I bought three. I clearly loved these quite a lot when I bought them. <laughs> Talking of leg assemblies, here's another really fun one. Sort of boxer shorts or underwear with red minifigure head sort of outlines on them. Kind of to make a sort of spotted uh, set of, well, they could be shorts, I suppose, but I think they look like boxer shorts. So that'll be fun for a little scene somewhere. Somebody caught in their undies, maybe sat in a laundrette or something like that. <laughs> so they're really good as well. So they're not from any set. This is from a set. This is a really smart looking suit with a chain, a watch chain across the front and all in dark blue. I'm going to change the hands out so they're yellow because uh, the set they came from is the Disney train set, recent one, um, 79044. Uh, and the hands are that colour because they came from the chipmunk chip. Everyone's favourite chipmunk. I mean, who likes Dale? I mean, really? <laughs> Only kidding. I don't know which one's which. Yep, so that's a really nice torso. I thought I'd give that to a man to have a nice suit. Then we've got a wizard hat, also in dark blue. Now, this is actually different from the one that comes with the, uh, what is it, Series 12 wizard? Uh, and also different from the one that comes in the Disney Castle, 71040, in that it's dark blue, not normal blue. And even that sort of, all the stars seem to be sort of almost blue tinged as well, don't they? The moon seems quite silver, but the stars seem quite blue tinged. So I don't know why I bought that. Why do I need a wizard's hat? I don't know. But um, it was unique, so I bought it. His blonde hair with black cat ears. Now, uh, this comes in a few different sets in different colour combinations, like friend sets and like the um, classic Catwoman from Batcave 76052. But she's got brown hair and this is blonde. So this is another unique piece from the Builder Minifigure wall. I think this might have been around Halloween just because of the obvious sort of cat ear connotations. I don't know. And I've got no idea where I'm going to have a woman with cat ears. Maybe it'll just be somebody who's sort of uh, doing the whole sort of manga or cosplay type vibe, some sort of uh, comic book hero. And then loads of hair that are either rare or unique. So I've got the uh, Princess Leia hair in dark tans. So that's sort of for the older Princess Leia. That's just in a couple of sets. This one, which is another uh, rare-ish hair in this colour of dark tan, just because it's only on uh, one set for Antok Merrick from the Rogue One movie. He's one of the pilots. Uh, then we've got this one, which is kind of the centre-parted hair, which has been used in lots of different uh, sets, actually, but um, not in this medium nougat colour. One of the ones it was in is the uh, Series 18 Birthday Party Boy, but that was in the sort of blonde hair, bright light yellow. So that's great. Another one with this sort of cowlick type front. It's a bit sort of Tintin-esque or a bit, I don't know who, but uh, that one's also unique in medium nougat. It comes in all sorts of other ones, grey, brown, dark brown, black, but 
Uh, oh no, hold on. This one's from the party, uh, party boy. It's this one that's from things like Professor Flitwick. Yeah, got those back to front. But nonetheless, they're both uh, unique in that color. So there's extra variety. And then this one's unique in this color as well. It's this sort of, I'd almost call that sort of Rachel haircut from Friends sort of thing. Looking like that. That looks a bit scary, that, doesn't it? Um, but that uh, in orange is unique. That, um, that's been in black for the Adventure Time Marceline, and it's been in bright light yellow for the Series 10 Trendsetter. But another unique piece of hair. So, yeah, that was a, an order almost born out of curiosity of just all these different pieces that I'd not even seen before and are going to be quite rare. Uh, and, well, these ones, just fantastic. I might start sporting them myself, showing off my lovely legs, uh, or maybe just uh, let Mrs. Hood wear them instead. That might be more popular. Right, excellent. What a fantastic haul. Not that big, uh, but very special indeed. Awesome. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And do also let me know what I should do with the two remaining Ultra Agents villains around Brick Nottingham. See if you've got any good ideas for their use, or should I just add them to the boardroom table? Anyway, next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be right back in the city for another LEGO City update. But until then, see you!